In this video, we're going to compare the Audio-Technica AT2040 dynamic microphone against the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone. Both of these are entry-level-ish microphones from Audio-Technica, and we're going to compare them in terms of podcasting, live streaming, and vocal recording to figure out which microphone is right for you. First of all, let's talk about the equipment setup in this video, just so you know how everything is set up and recorded. Both microphones are connected to these microphone boom arms. The Rode PSA One Plus is used on both of these. The XLR outputs from both microphones are run into the Rodecaster Duo. I think the Rodecaster Duo is the best audio mixer for this. It's my favorite right now for podcasting and live streaming. So if I'm reviewing these microphones for that purpose, it seems most appropriate to use this audio mixer. Now, if you are curious as to which microphone you're listening to at any given time, you will see that there is a label that pops up and moves side to side, so you know what microphone you're listening to throughout the demo on this video. Now, I do highly recommend as you listen to this video that you use some type of headphones connected to your computer to watch this video. You'll hear much more of the detail and the things that we noticed throughout all the tests in this video. When we're comparing both of these microphones, of course, everybody wants to know about the price. But the price does vary so much depending on region, time of year, seasonality, and holidays, and that type of thing. So we do have links down in the description below that you can use to find everything that you see in this video from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you find the best price possible if you are looking to buy anything in this video. Next, in terms of overall looks and first impressions, let's look at the Audio-Technica AT2040 first. This microphone has an all-metal build. Really my only criticism in terms of looks and first impressions and build quality is that there is a plastic ring that is used to mount this microphone. It does flex and sometimes it gets hung up, but overall it's not a big deal. I think it does look great on camera if you're doing a video podcast or a live stream. Same with the Audio-Technica AT2020. Everything here is built well. I have no doubt that this micro microphone would last you five to 10 years as long as you take care of it and you're not banging it around. I think it looks great on camera as well. Now in terms of mounting, the Audio-Technica AT2040 does have this plastic slip ring. It's not my favorite, but I also have no doubt that you can get the microphone where you want and position it how you need for your recording. Next on the Audio-Technica AT2020, it has an end mount here that just screws on the bottom of the microphone. This is a pretty common design used on condenser microphones. Now neither one of these microphones have any type of shock mount, we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we get into the further tests. Next, let's take a look at the specs of these microphones. The Audio-Technica AT2040 is a dynamic XLR microphone. It has a hypercardioid polar pattern, so it is a bit narrower, a bit more focused on whoever's speaking into this microphone. It's an end address microphone with a frequency response between 80 hertz and 16 kilohertz. It has a sensitivity of minus 53 dB, Max SPL is not published for this microphone, and it weighs about 615 grams, or about 1.3 pounds. For the Audio-Technica AT2020, it's an XLR condenser microphone, so it does require 48 volts of phantom power from your audio mixer or audio interface. It has a cardioid polar pattern. It's a side address microphone. I'm sure you noticed that in the video already. I'm speaking into the side of the microphone. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a sensitivity of minus 37 dB. It has a max SPL of 144 dB, and it weighs only 345 grams, or about three quarters of a pound. Next, let's take a quick look at the frequency response graph of these microphones. On the Audio-Technica AT2040, you can see here that it's published at only being audible at 80 Hertz. You can see that it basically has a built-in high pass filter here where it rolls up from 20 Hertz to 100 Hertz. And they're saying it basically becomes audible around this part. After that, we do notice that there's a mid scoop in the low mids here targeting kind of that 400 hertz range. It's only about a dB or two, but this is pretty common for a broadcast or vocal recording to put that mid dip in there. It does just open up a little bit of that muddiness. It gets rid of it, makes the microphone a little bit easier to listen to. Next, we have the defining moment of the Audio-Technica AT2040. At about three and a half kilohertz here, you can see that there is a seven dB bump. There's this big bump here. This is giving you that high mid clarity to help make vocals more easy to listen to. 
It's completely subjective, but that is the intent here to give more clarity in the recording without adding any additional EQ. After that part, we do see that it fades off to about 10K where it breaks even again, or maybe it breaks even around 7K, and then it falls off the cliff here around 15K or so. Next, we have the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is pretty typical for an entry-level condenser microphone. You can see that we are losing a little bit of information around the low end here, but once we get up to 200 hertz, it's pretty flat. It's not ruler flat, but it's respectable, all the way up to about 5K, where we get a bit of a bump centered around 8 or 9K for a dB or two, and then it comes off after that. So overall, you could expect a pretty consistent sound with the Audio-Technica AT2020. Next, we have our plosive test. So far, you've been listening to me with proper microphone technique, but now we're gonna demonstrate the worst case scenario for either one of these microphones. Peter put peanut butter on his pineapple pizza. 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 Next, we have a background noise test here. We're going to be using a typical keyboard and mouse setup. So if you are working at your desk or something like that, if you are live streaming, this is how it would sound with the Audio-Technica AT2040. And this is how it would sound with the Audio-Technica AT2020. Next, if you are recording a podcast or anything conversational, here's just a little bit of shuffling paper behind the Audio-Technica AT2040. And again, we're going to do the same paper shuffling test with the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is how the Audio-Technica AT2040 sounds when you speak directly into the microphone. This is how the Audio-Technica AT2040 sounds when you speak to the side of the microphone. And here's how the Audio-Technica AT2040 sounds when you speak into the rear of the microphone. This is how the Audio-Technica AT2020 sounds like when you speak into the front of the microphone. This is how the Audio-Technica AT2020 sounds when you speak in the side of the microphone. And this is how the Audio-Technica AT2020 sounds when you speak into the rear of the microphone. This is how the frequency response changes when you're right next to the Audio-Technica AT2040. This is how the frequency response changes when you're about a fist away from the Audio-Technica AT2040. This is how the frequency response changes when you're about a foot away from the Audio-Technica AT2040. This is how the frequency response changes when you're right next to the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is how the frequency response changes when you're about a fist away from the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is how the frequency response changes when you're about a foot away from the Audio-Technica AT2020. Next, we have the handling noise. So as is typical in live streams and podcasting, people will be grabbing the microphone. This is how it sounds if you do need to grab and move this microphone throughout your recording. On the Audio-Technica AT2020, this is how it sounds if you need to move the microphone a little bit. This is a pretty typical example of handling noise throughout your recording of a live stream or a podcast. This is what it sounds like when you tap on the Audio-Technica AT2040. And if you're using the Audio-Technica AT2040 on a table stand, this is what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like when you tap the Audio-Technica AT2020 when it's an, on an articulating boom arm. And this is what it sounds like if the AT2020 is on a desktop stand. And this is what it sounds like with the Audio-Technica AT2040 with some processing turned on on the Rodecaster Duo. We have the big bottom, we have a de -esser, we have a compressor, we have a gate, all the things that you might be tempted to add with your microphone. This is a quick sample on what this might sound like in your recording. And this is what the Audio-Technica AT2020 sounds like with the same processing turned on on the Rodecaster Duo. We have the big bottom, some EQ, a de -esser, a compressor, and a noise gate applied to this microphone to give you an idea of what this microphone could sound like if you put a little bit of effort into it. And now we have the processing turned off on both microphones so you can hear them in their natural state again. Next, we have a blind test. No, no, it's not the computers. The computers were fine and the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is indeed 42. The problem is that nobody knew what the question was.
No, no, it's not the computers. The computers were fine, and the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is indeed 42. The problem is that nobody knew what the question was. All right, I just finished editing everything, and I have some thoughts. So, first of all, if you watch this video really closely, you probably noticed that the AT2040 is within a fist of my mouth, and the AT2020 is a fist and a pinky. It's an extra inch away. Now that does make a pretty big difference when it comes to tone, but since it's a condenser microphone, I prefer that extra inch away from my mouth, otherwise you start to pick up all that detail inside the mouth that nobody really wants to hear. So yes, the proximity effect of the AT2020 does get better as you get closer, but you start to hear all the smacks and clacks in inside of the mouth and it's not ideal, so I do go with that extra inch. That's kind of the compromise that you have to make if you're using a condenser microphone for a vocal recording. So I did just want to address that, that yes, it sounds a little bit thinner because we're farther away, but yes, it's also kind of a requirement of the microphone that we're working with. Next, when I'm comparing microphones, I really have three deal breakers that will exclude a microphone from ever getting recommended. One is build quality. I think both of these microphones have good build quality. I'm a little bit nervous about the plastic ring on the AT2040, but I don't think it's, once you're aware of it, you can take care of it and baby it if that's your thing. So I don't think there's any major red flags here. Next, for handling noise, this was really interesting. The AT2040 claims that it's a podcast and live streaming microphone, but if you can't go like this without all of your guests, if, if they're not watching the feed, you just hear that rumbling and that, like it's a totally normal thing that you should be able to grab the microphone without totally interrupting your live stream or podcast and creating an environment that's quite distracting. In comparison, the AT2020 did a much better job. So I think overall, like right there, I would almost exclude the AT2040 because of how bad it is. You have to be able to use the equipment in the way that you're wanting to use it. Adjusting the microphone is a completely normal thing, and the AT2040 is horrible at it. It's even on a really good boom arm that's better at isolating, and it's still horrible at this. Next is background noise. The AT2040 picked up way more keyboard noise and way more paper noise than the Audio-Technica AT2020. The AT2020 sounded a lot more clean, a lot more natural. Those noises in the background you could still hear, but the balance, the signal-to-noise ratio was a lot better. This is really weird to me because the AT2040 claims that it's a hypercardioid, which means that it's a narrower pickup pattern. It's supposed to be far more directional. But the Audio-Technica AT2020 is a cardioid. It's supposed to be a little bit more open. But what we heard here is that AT2040 picks up way more background noise and is less focused in the real world. Now, the other reason that I love doing these comparisons and going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, is right at the very beginning, I'm kind of left with the impression, oh man, the AT2040 sounds way better out of the box. It has that broadcast sound with it. And then you go back to the AT2020 and you get kind of reset and you come back. And when you do this over and over, you start to realize that that three and a half kilohertz bump that we talked about with the frequency response chart, that is really picking up that nasally sound. When you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you notice it gets kind of honky sounding. I don't know if that's the right word to describe it, but it, it's not my favorite to listen to for a long period of time. In contrast, the Audio-Technica AT2020 sounds a lot more open and natural and breathy, and it, it lacked a little bit of that punch. But the redeeming quality for the AT2020 is when we turned on that processing on the Rodecaster Duo, Man, that brought the AT2020 alive, I think. And if you add processing to the AT2020, you have less handling noise. You sound a little bit more natural. You have less background noise. To me, those are all major pros when comparing to the AT2040. So overall, what are my thoughts here? Which one of these should you buy if you're comparing either one of them? To me, out of the box, the AT2040 sounds better. And when I say sounds better, it sounds more like people expect a podcast microphone to sound. That being said, when you listen to it for a long period of time, that three and a half kilohertz, that high mid section does kind of start nasally and honky sounding. It's, it's not great. But then for me, the 2040, the deal breakers are you literally can't use this microphone. If you can't touch the microphone in your podcast or live stream without it being a massive interruption, that excludes the microphone to me. 
The AT2020 sounds a little bit flat when you get it out of the box, but it has less handling noise, less background noise, and when you add just a basic generic processing setup to it from the Rodecaster Duo, it brought this microphone alive. And for me, that's easily workable. If you're doing a podcast with, or live stream with either one of these, you can easily add processing to your microphone in a million different ways. And I think the AT2020 is gonna be easier for you to work with in the long run. I hope this video has been helpful. I'm very curious to know what you think of either one of these microphones, if you agree or if you disagree. Is there another microphone that you wanna see compared to either one of these microphones? Let me know down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for everything that you see in this video, we have links down in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.